Hey everyone, Shahar here from Waves. Today I'm going to walk you through the basics of mixing a multi-track drum kit. Keep in mind there are a hundred different ways you can mix your drums depending on your song and the drums you receive, but I'm going to walk you through some of the basic things that I did for this specific song that I'm working on now. So let's listen to what everything sounds like after all the processing that I did. Alright, so there are four main things that you want to take care of. First of all is the internal balance of the separate drum tracks. For example, in this case, the kick and the snare are more prominent. The hi-hat not so much because there's not an important part to it. It's also coming through the overhead some. You want to balance your overhead track versus your room track. One has more cymbal information and one has more early reflections from the room. So that's that. The second thing you want to do is process some of the individual drum tracks. In this case, I EQ'd and compressed the kick, snare, and overhead. The third thing you're going to do, parallel compression. I'm going to show you that technique in just a second. And the fourth thing, we're going to add a little bit of reverb to the snare. So let's jump right in. Here's what my kit sounded like when I got it. That's actually a pretty well recorded kit, but I want to make it sound even better. So let's start with a kick drum. I pushed about 7 dB at 60 Hz because between 55 and 90 Hz is usually where you feel the kick kicking you in the chest, so to speak. And then I pushed a little more at about 5K because I also want the beat to cut through the track. I then took out some at about 500 to clean it out, make it sound a little tighter and less boxy. So without this EQ, it sounds like this. And with it, so that's tighter and it kicks you a little better. Then I put a compressor, the Wave C1. I set the threshold low enough so that the compressor is really working with a ratio of 8 to 1 in this case and put the attack slow enough so that the weight and the impact of the kick comes through the, the compressor and the compressor doesn't compress right from the beginning and kill all the transient. So in this case, 45 milliseconds. I set the release to be really fast because that gave it a sort of snap. So with the EQ and the compression, the kick sounds like this. Here's without. And with. All right, let's jump to our snare. I wanted the snare to really cut through in this song. It needed a lot of crack. Here's what it sounded like originally. And with my EQing. What I did was push about 10 dB at 2.5K. That's where the crack came from. Added some more at about 7.5K to keep it bright. And then I added 6 dB at about 150 Hz to give it some weight because without it, it sounded a little papery. Here's without that push at 150 hertz. And with it. Just a little heavier. It works. I use compressor settings that are pretty similar to the kick for more or less the same reasons. Just the threshold was in a bit of a different place, but again, left the attack long enough so that the snare comes through and a fast release for the snap. Let's jump to the overhead tracks. This is what the overhead sounded like with nothing on them. So I used the Waves REQ6 and I pushed quite a lot at 12 and a half K. Here's what it sounds like. I pushed that frequency because I wanted that sparkle and the shine out of the rides. Typically, cymbals start at about 8K but that would have been too heavy for this track. So 12 and a half gave me the point where it gives shine but not too much weight to the stick of the ride. I pushed some more at two and a half to add crack to the snare, cleaned it out at about 350 and then pushed a little bit at about 80 hertz just to give it a little bit more weight to the overhead track. Here's what it sounds like with. Without. Then I used the Wave C1 compressor 
And in this case, I put a pretty fast attack time because, again, I didn't want the heavy sticks on the ride. I just wanted it to really flatten things out and give it a bit of a wash on those cymbals. That was the main reason um, I EQ'd and compressed the overheads this way. So here's what it sounds like. Without the EQ and compression. And with. So that's all the processing we're going to do to the individual tracks. Let's hear it again, unprocessed. And with those EQs and compressors. Now I'm going to do something called parallel compression. Parallel compression is when you take a track, you duplicate it, and you compress one of those duplicates really hard and blend it with the original. And you play them side by side. So in this case, I took all my drums, and I sent them the output to bus 5 and 6, set an AUGS to receive bus 5 and 6, set another AUGS to receive bus 5 and 6, and put a compressor on that. Let's listen just to the AUGS with a compressor. I use the SSL bus comp. Sounds really cool. It has that explosive sound, but on its own it would be too much. I put the threshold very low so that the compressor is really working, cranked up the makeup gain, set a fast attack, because that was, that's what worked, gave me a bit of the explosive sound and the fast release. Let's see what it would have sounded like if I would have, were to put a slow release. You're going to see it's going to pump, but not in a way that's flattering. With a fast release, All right, so let's blend the uncompressed drums with this one. That's too much. That's about a good spot. Let's hear it in the mix. So now you go look for Sounds pretty cool, but the snare is a little, the crack of the snare is a little too close. So I wanted to add some reverb to the snare. I set up a send from the snare track out to a reverb. I put Waves IR1. I found a plate whose decay time works with the groove of the song. So here's just the snare without the reverb and then with. Here's without. And with. Without. And with. So that's about it. That should do it. Let's listen to the whole thing in the mix. I'm going to bypass all the processing I did and then put it back in and you can hear the difference. Thanks again for watching.